Hello, my name is Graham Barnes, and I'm the Recruitment and Student Engagement Coordinator in the Faculty of Environment at the University of Waterloo. I'm here to tell you about the Environment, Resources, and Sustainability program to help you decide if it's the right fit for you. So why Environment, Resources, and Sustainability, or ERS for short? The Faculty of Environment at Waterloo is one of the oldest and largest faculties in Canada dedicated to the environment and made up of a great group of people. Students, staff, faculty and researchers, all who share common values and goals. When the faculty was first started over 50 years ago in 1969, it was based on a dream that we continue to chase today, making the world a more sustainable place, environmentally, socially, and in terms of economic prosperity. We're on a mission to do something better for the world that we live in. We are world leaders in climate action, and you can take advantage of our incredible co-op program where environment students have over a 95% employment rate. If you're passionate about environmental issues, then the School of Environment, Resources, and Sustainability is a great place for you. You'll use insights from the natural, physical, and social sciences to help solve some of the world's biggest environmental challenges, from water and food to energy and biodiversity. Learn about conserving and restoring ecosystems and explore issues in environmental governments. In one of the most flexible programs at Waterloo, you can easily customize your degree to study a broad range of topics or focus on a specific area of expertise with specializations or double majors in areas such as biology, political science, and peace and conflict studies. SIRS is distinctive because of their commitment to transdisciplinary teaching, learning, and research. Here are some professors to discuss their work. You may take classes with them in your upper years or work with them as a research assistant. Hello, my name is Jennifer Clapp and I'm a professor and Canada Research Chair in the School of Environment, Resources and Sustainability. My own work is in the area of environmental policy and governance, with a special focus on food system sustainability, including research into the environmental impacts of food and agriculture systems at the global level. I also research the politics and economics of global environmental problems. SIRS offers a range of courses in the area of environmental policy and governance, with a focus on both the Canadian and global contexts. The courses I teach include Environmental Policy, Politics and Governance, a second year core course that explores the political dynamics and policy decisions around natural resources and the environment in Canada. I also teach a course on global food and agriculture politics that looks at the ways in which the current organization of the global food system affects society and the environment in an international context. The school offers a range of other courses that relate to these themes, which I encourage you to check out. These include courses on global environmental governance, sustainable agricultural ecosystems, food systems and sustainability, and economics and sustainability, to name just a few. The School of Environment, Resources and Sustainability is a fantastic intellectual environment. It is exciting to work with a group of outstanding professors and students who are exploring key sustainability issues at the interface of science and policy. Ian Murphy, I do ecological restoration here at SERS, and what you're seeing is a slide of me on there looking at restoring of Terra Oak savannas. And the whole idea here is to take old pine plantations, which are pretty monotypic, they don't really support a lot of biodiversity, and turn them very quickly, within about 10 to 15 years, into a really nice savanna. So that means you've got some prairie and you've got some oak down there. That's the natural feature. A lot of my students work on projects like this, both undergraduate and graduate. We've been doing this for about 25 years and been very successful at it. So if this interests you, you can be part of SERS. My name is Dan McCarthy. I am a cisgendered, heterosexual, white male with lots of privilege. My ancestors came to Turtle Island, now known as North America, in the 1840s from Ireland as a result of the Irish potato famine. My ancestors took advantage of broken treaty promises here and benefited from them, and I continue to benefit from those broken treaty promises. I live and work on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Neutral Nations. 
I've had the privilege of working in and with Indigenous communities and Indigenous-led organizations across the country for about 15 years now. I have had some amazing and very patient teachers in my research journey, including some wise and gifted elders. I've undertaken several collaborative research projects that look at cross-cultural collaborations, fostering innovations in fields such as environmental policy, education, and corporate government Indigenous relations. All of these have been based on trust-based relationships with Indigenous colleagues, where they helped to co-develop the research right from the beginning. We always try to ensure that the research is rigorous, but also meets the needs of the communities and Indigenous-led organizations involved. I try to involve graduate students in these research projects in a meaningful way, and I know that they have learned a lot and are hopefully transformed in the process. I want to highlight a course that I was able to co-design and currently co-teach with Peter Schuler, who is an elder from the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We stand on his traditional territory here at U of W, and that's Peter there on the right side of the slide. We've run this course for six years now, bringing together traditional Anishinaabe teachings and relevant academic literature. Feel free to come by my office to ask questions. As my Anishinaabe colleagues say, miigwech, as my Haida colleagues say, hawa, and I just want to say thank you. Now, what does the program actually look like? The first year is designed to give you a solid foundation of ERS in all aspects. Most of your classes are selected for you, but you still have four electives, so you can begin exploring other areas of study you're interested in right away. An example of a first year course is field ecology. In this course, students gain practical field and lab skills through different activities each week. This includes identifying trees, understanding birds as indicator species, assessing stream health, forest succession, and how climate change impacts our world. And you really have the opportunity to make your degree your own. You could choose from a whole variety of unique pathways that craft the exact experience you're looking for, including a minor as a part of your degree provides additional knowledge and skills. With ERS, you may choose to select a specialized diploma, which is a combination of requirements that provides additional focus to your degree. You will also have the opportunity to take part in incredible experiential learning opportunities. It might look like the incredible experience Bailey had, in her final year, she was a part of a group of seven Waterloo students who traveled to Marrakesh, Morocco for COP22, the United Nations Global Conference on Climate Change. She joined representatives from more than 196 countries working together to fight global warming. Since the Faculty of Environment is relatively small, the community prides itself on being welcoming and tight-knit. Our students are involved in many clubs, societies, and environmental sustainability initiatives. But I want to highlight two that many students choose to get involved with. The first is Invigorate, which is an annual event full of workshops like terrarium making, academic student research, and a swap shop. All of these allow us to live our values by running fun and sustainable events. The second is the Environment, Resources, and Sustainability Student Association, or URSA, because that is a mouthful. The society plans fun events for ERS students and advocates on their behalf to ensure a great student experience. These events help students meet and build connections with other students and sometimes their professors. Another way to have incredible experiential learning opportunities is through co-op. In ERS, you have the option to apply to the five-year co-op program or fast track in the non-co-op four-year option. Some of the benefits of co-op are you graduate with 20 months of paid work experience. You'll also earn between $38,000 and $85,000 over five terms to help pay for school. You'll grow your network and you get to try out different careers. You can learn what you like and just as importantly, what you don't like, because it's only four months at a time, there's no harm in trying different pathways. As you can see, the work you can do is just as diverse as your courses may be. 
And the way your degree schedule would work is one would study from September to April in their first year and have a traditional summer off where if you're lucky, your parents are still willing to do your dishes. Then in the first term of your second year, you'll be studying full time and beginning to apply for jobs, interview and secure your first co-op job. From there, you will work full time in that paid position for four months, getting valuable experience and growing your network. Then you'll return to school in the spring term from May to August and take another full course load while repeating the process to secure your fall term co-op job. This process repeats and alternates throughout your degree. Now, if you would like to pursue your degree in a more traditional four-year timeline for a bachelor's degree in Canada, you could choose the traditional non-co-op program for ERS. This offers advantages as you'll finish your undergraduate studies earlier and have your summers open and flexible to plan what you would like to do. You could also choose to participate in our EDGE program from the University of Waterloo, which earns successful participants a certificate. Students who enroll will develop their professional skills, explore their career options, and learn how to market themselves to employers. Let's take a look at your career options. Our students work in a variety of roles and industries. Your skills will be relevant and diverse, which will allow you to be a strong candidate in the field that best suits you. That could be anything from being an ecologist to a consultant. The choice is yours. So what are the admission requirements for ERS? For students studying in Ontario, we require you to have a minimum 80% average overall using your top six grade 12 U or M level courses. These six are used in calculating that overall high school average. Among those must be a grade 12 university level English credit with a minimum of 70% in that specific course. If you study outside of Ontario, Canada, visit the link on this slide to learn of the specific requirements from your education system. Let's take a look at our scholarships. I know I like free money, and I hope you do too. Every student admitted to full-time first-year studies in the Faculty of Environment is automatically considered for the following scholarships provided they are beginning post-secondary studies for the first time in Fall 2020. No application is required. You must accept your offer of admission by the date specified on the offer to remain eligible for these scholarships. If you're a high-achieving student with an 85% average or higher, I'd encourage you to apply for the following scholarships. The first is the Dean of Environment Scholarship for Excellence. This award is for up to five incoming undergraduate environment students. Recipients are selected based on academic excellence, demonstrated leadership, and a passion for the environment. These scholarships are valued at $7,500 each. The second is the Faculty of Environment Student Engagement Award. This award is for up to 25 incoming undergraduate environment students. Recipients are selected based on their previous volunteer, leadership, and or sustainability related activities in their communities. These scholarships are valued at $2,000 each. Thanks for watching. Please get in contact with us if you have any questions. We look forward to seeing you in September as an Environment, Resources, and Sustainability student.